Hello guys, Greg back with another video on the channel. It's all killer, no filler. So today I'm going to do a video about classic men's fragrances and ones that are still in production and readily available to buy today. People are going to have different opinions on what constitutes a classic. I've picked mainly ones from the 80s and 90s, ones that I own. Um, and I think most people will agree that these are considered classics. So we'll jump straight into it. The first one we've got, a real 80s classic. This is from the house of Yves Saint Laurent and this is Curos. And this is a very polarising one. This is the one that we used to steal from our dad back in the 80s. The reason it's polarising is that it's got kind of a urinal smell to it. Um, now it's weird to say that and then to still say that I love the fragrance, but I do. I mean, obviously I don't want to smell of urine. It's not, not the best look, but there's a lot more going, going on in this. What I say and what I've said before is it's more like... <laughs> I'm making things worse here, but it's more like the urinal cake that you're getting a men's urinal because it's got that floral kind of smell to it as well. Um, but there's m lots of other dimensions to this. I mean, any fragrance that's got keynotes of civet, honey, leather, and musk is going to be animalic. Um, but there's a lot going on in here. You get florals, you get spices, woods, there's balsams in here. I don't see many guys in their teens wearing this these days but back in the 80s i think everyone from the age of 16 to 80 really wore this um i still love it today but it's kind of not one that i think the young crowd would wear these days so next up we've got another 80s classic this is an absolute banger from calvin klein this is obsession for men and as with that bottle of curos this is very old i think this is a 90s bottle uh, this is beautiful warm spicy woody amber fragrance it's very cozy very warm packed with vanilla and cinnamon uh, if you're watching this you probably you know know what this one smells like but i'm really glad that unlike a lot of classic fragrances from back in the 80s this one's still in production and available to buy um next up another i believe this is an 80s one this is a real cheapy um another one that reminds me of school in the 80s and this is dracar noir from Guy La roche this is a classic aromatic fougere barbershop type fragrance. It's got all of those classic aromatic fougere notes in here like um, lavender and rosemary and juniper, pine. It's got carnation in here and there's hints of leather and hints of anise in here as well. Um, this one makes you smell like a dad, which, you know, might be good, might be bad, but it's a classy, timeless classic and it's very cheap. That's Dracar Noir. Now we've got one of my all-time favourite fragrances from one of my all-time favourite houses from Chanel. This is Egoist. Um, don't mistake this one for Platinum Egoist. They're very different fragrances, but this one's the king. Um, now, Egoist means selfish in French, and the idea behind this one is that it's a man's fragrance that he wears for himself and his own enjoyment. Um, to be honest, I think all fragrances should be like that. You should wear them for your own enjoyment, but that's specifically part of you know back in the the 90s that was the marketing behind this one um so this is a sandalwood sandalwood and cinnamon lead fragrance it's got lots going on in here it comes to life after about half an hour you get all the heart notes and base notes start to show the and the the dry down in here is sandalwood and vanilla and it's stunning um it's quite a mature fragrance um as a lot of these ones in here will be but i always say wear you know wear whatever you like i've done a full review on this one so I'll leave a link in the video description if you want to find out a bit more of a comprehensive rundown on this one. Um, I'll leave that down there. Um, next up, now this really is a classic, and this one's from the 60s. And this is from the house of Dior, or Christian Dior, as it was commonly called back then. And this is Eau Sauvage. Uh, and this is a citrus, citrus aromatic fragrance. And to describe it, I'd say it's like a herbal citrus with some florals, um, and a musky vetiver base. Probably, again, not for the current sort of young crowd, but it's beautifully crafted and definitely a classic. Um, can't really do this one justice in a few sentences. I will hopefully do a full review and let you know a bit more about that one. So that's yours, Eau Sauvage. Next one that we have, which one shall I pick? Uh, yeah, this one. So this is the fragrance that I have done a massive U-turn on. I absolutely hated it. And then within about the space of a year, I became, you know, one of my favourites and I absolutely love it. It's from the house of Mugler, which was Thierry Mugler, and it's called Amen. Um, this one has got a lot of flankers. For anyone that doesn't know what that is, it's, you know, different derivatives of it. We're, it there's loads of different versions. But this is the original. Um, 
And the DNA, DNA in all of these Amen fragrances is amazing. The thing that used to put me off this one is it's got a very harsh tar note in the top, but it does develop. It becomes a beautiful sort of chocolatey caramel, caramel gourmand fragrance. It's a very creative, very daring release from a, from a designer house, but absolutely love that one. Uh, next one we have um, one from Ralph Lauren, and this one is, and again, a very old bottle of Polo Green. It's a very classic woody sheep row. It's got citrus, woods, pine. Starts out with kind of a soapy citrus uh, and then develops into a very woody pine, and it's got tobacco and leather in the base. A very manly fragrance, this one. Um, still think it smells great today. Absolute beaut. Um, next one. Um, this is probably the fragrance that made me become a real fraghead. Um, and this is Aqua de Gio for, from Giorgio Armani. I bought this one, I think it was 1996 this was released, and I bought it at the time of release. I also bought Ralph Lauren Romance. And I wore them constantly, along with a couple of others, for about five years. I still absolutely love this. Holds a lot of memories for me. It's one of them fragrances that sort of takes you back to the time of when you used to wear it. It's a beautiful aquatic fragrance. Um, it's loaded with what you know gets generically called sea notes. Uh, it's packed full of citrus with lemon, uh, lime, bergamot. Um, there's orange, there's watermelon. They're all fused together and they all last throughout the fragrance's journey on your skin. Um, the citrus and the aromatic, uh, sorry, aquatic kind of notes in here are joined by a beautiful fresh musk. Um, until Paco Rabanne came out in, I think it was 2008, that was this one, Aqua de Gio, was the leading um, selling men's fragrance for about, um, well, it would have been 12 years from 1996 onwards until it was replaced by uh, 1 million. Uh, next one, another one I bought in the late 90s, another one that I've got quite a vintage bottle here, uh, and another one I wore to death like I did with Aqua de Gio, and this is Chanel's Allure Homme. Lots going on in this fragrance. Um, hard to know where to sort of start to describe this, but at its core, it's a vanilla amber tonka. It's, uh, it's got some spice in here, mainly coming from ginger. Um, it's got a very prominent leather note in here, but this one's beautiful. It's perfectly named Allure because it is very alluring. Uh, next one up. So bold, bold statement here, but this is the one that I consider to be the best men's fragrance release of all time not because it's my favorite but because of what it you know what it is and what it did and this is the unmistakable Le Mal from Jean-Paul Gaultier uh, came out in the mid 90s and this was worn by literally everyone um, the early formulations of this of which this bottle that I've got here is were were far better but it's, it's still a good fragrance today um, it's one of the strongest fragrances I've ever come across I mean I am an over sprayer and even I'd only do two sprays with this and that will last all day and, and you know, next day after a shower. Um, it projects like a beast. Um, to sort of break it down simply, there's three notes that combine in here to create that sort of magic that I get from this. And that's lavender, mint and vanilla. Um, but yeah, still, although it's reformulated, still a beautiful fragrance, timeless, absolute classic. Uh, let's pick another one so we'll go with this this is another citrus aromatic very much in the vein of Duro Sauvage and this is Eau Pour Homme by Giorgio Armani again this is an old bottle uh, I think the black part here is from memory silver now on the current versions can't remember um, but this is a citrus oak moss vetiver fragrance timeless classic gentleman scent um, you know, don't really hear any talk about it, don't really see it in department stores, but if you get a chance to try it, I really would recommend it. Um, next up, now this one I didn't actually own and haven't owned for years. It's one of two fragrances that I bought specifically to do this video because I just thought they needed to be in there. And this is from Cartier, and this is called Declaration or Declaration, if you want to be French. Um, and this one sits in my favourite category of fragrances, which is woody floral musks. Um, because I haven't owned this, I haven't worn it for years, but I've worn it today so to, I could give you at least some idea. Obviously, I haven't tested it much, much, but what I initially get from it is it's sweet, sort of sweet resinous notes. There's a warm spiciness. There's some bitter citrus in here. Um, wears very classily on a man, but 
definitely 100% unisex, this one, in my opinion. So that is Cartier and Declaration. Um, another, uh, what have we got? Another citrus aromatic here. And this one, this time, is from the house of Givenchy. And this is Monsieur de Givenchy. This is a vintage bottle again. Um, current bottle come, the current bottle is like a tall frosted style bottle. Um, but this one is kind of, it's, it's citrus, lavender and oak moss, really the keynotes. This is the best of all of the citrus aromatics that I've mentioned in this video, in my opinion. Uh, very gentlemanly classic. Uh, that is Monsieur de Givenchy. Uh, next one is the second one that I had run out of and haven't owned for a while. Another one that everyone seemed to wear in the 1990s. You'll recognise it straight away. Davidoff Cool Water. Um, literally got this well, with the, the, the Cartier. So I've only had a little spritz of it. But I obviously remember exactly what this one smells like. I'm sure you will do as well. But it's, it's kind of got a marine vibe. It's got sea notes. It's got spicy green notes. That's mixed with lavender and mint and musk. Lots more going on in here. Um, very inoffensive. Fresh crowd pleasing sort of fragrance. Still very current, I would say, even sort of 25 years after this one was released. Um, another one, which was a beaut from the 90s, and I almost forgot this one, so I literally just grabbed it because um, it needed to be included in the video. And this is from Isimiyaki, and it's low dissy. You can see it's a bit bruised and battered. I think this is a 1990s um, bottle that I've got here. But this is a beautiful wood, woody citrus aquatic scent. Um, is it aquatic or aquatic? I never know, but anyway. Um, most of you know this one's kind of famed for its yuzu note, which was quite a new um, note in in perfumery, but it's, which is a Japanese fruit. But it's also got lotus flower, which gives it the uh, aquatic feel. Um, there's lots of lemon, there's but lots of bergamot and lots of vetiver in here. Uh, but when this one came out, it was so different to everything else. And again, everyone seemed to wear it, but I still think. You know, with the exception of a few copies, I still think it's pretty unique today and I still absolutely love it. Uh, penultimate fragrance for today's video is Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme. Um, now this one changed its um, packaging, its bottle and everything in 2012. It used to look like this. It's an aftershave version, um, which is the older version. This one is what it will look like if you buy it today. Um, it smells quite different actually to me, although it's still got the, the you know, the base of, of the original. It's still a great fragrance, even though it smells kind of different. Um, in a similar way to La Mal, um, this one's a heavily lavender led aromatic frugere fragrance. It's got a beautiful citrus opening in here, but it then becomes all about lavender and tobacco. It's got some neroli, got some spice, but it's really centered around the three main notes, which is, uh, you know, or a cords, which is citrus, lavender, and leather. Um, I'm sure most of you have tried it. If not, you need to. A superb fragrance. And saving the best for last, um, after still, you know, still after trying many thousands of fragrances, still my favourite fragrance of all time. And this is the inhibit. I'm going to say that word, inimitable, as in can't be imitated, <laughs> Dior Fahrenheit. Um, Main thing that people talk about with this one is that it's got like a petrol accord or gasoline for my friends in the US. And it's violet leaf, leather and musk that are really the standout notes and they're what create that unique accord. That's what I believe does anyway. And the leather in here is amazing. I think this fragrance is kind of like a leather jacket soaked in petrol. Um, but yeah, an absolute stunner. I'm going to end the video i'm just going to pick the camera up this is going to be a bit car crash i'm just going to show you how much i love fahrenheit just bear with me a second and we'll go and have a look Ta -da! yeah so you can see i've got a few fahrenheits i've got um versions from lots of years in the 80s and 90s i've also got all the flank because you can see absolute and summer zero degree we've got uh, fahrenheit 32 there but yeah this is kind of one of my favorite little cupboards i'll pan out a bit you can see so i've got a load of dior's there i've got a load of my chanel's up there and my other brand that i consider to be part of the holy trinity girl on the bottom there but yeah fahrenheit 
still my favorite fragrance and um yeah all of the ones that i mentioned today are considered classics you can still go out and buy them today they were still all great so there you go hope you enjoyed the video guys thanks for watching leave a comment let me know some other classics give a thumbs up um you know if you're not subscribed to my channel please do and i will be back very soon with another video cheers <laughs>